This is the Internet Report, where we uncover what's working and what's breaking on the Internet and why. Today we're going to go over an interesting event that occurred a couple of weeks ago that was yet another reminder of the fragility of the Internet. So the incident involved a service provider, um, this was Barty uh, Airtel, leaking routes that belonged to Amazon. And the result of this is that the service provider erroneous, erroneously was inserted into the path to Amazon and this led to a significant amount of packet loss which disrupted some of Amazon's sites as well as many AWS compute customers. So to help us break this all down, I'm joined by Mike Hicks. Mike, welcome. Thanks, Angela. Good to be here. Great. So walk us through what happened. How did this all unfold? It was a pretty interesting event and uh, we yeah. were able to observe it. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it showed up quite nicely. Yeah, it was actually really quite an interesting event that we, we see there. As you said, it was uh, occurred a couple of weeks ago, so on July the uh, July the twelfth. Um, the timing is quite significant, really, as well as as to the impact it had from um, a global perspective, I should say. So it, it we, we first observed it uh, occurring around sort of nine ten UTC, which is uh, uh, two ten a.m. Pacific. Um, so. Uh, pretty much late Sunday night or very early Monday morning uh, from there. But, but then that obviously transferred to an APAC time zone, which was sort of uh, early evening on the, uh, on the Monday, seeing as we operate in the future down here. So <laughs> what we started to see, first of all, like I say, was, was this disruption. Um, and when I'm actually looking down from here, I can start to see the impact coming in to the, uh, uh, to the Amazon nodes from there. And if we actually start to go in uh, initially, what we, we actually see is, is start to see some, some telltale signs of where it was coming from. So just drilling into the Columbus node there or to the, the nodes of Columbus, I can start to see that I'm having some impact coming across here um, or, or some, some um, uh, routes starting to, to pass through sort of Barty there as well then as some uh, internet exchange sites. Um, but as we said there, it started to impact like a number of customers. It impacted in different ways, both the uh, Amazon.com customers. Uh, so they were manifesting in the way that they're actually starting to, uh, if you were in the middle of a page logging in, uh, something that required something from the back end there. We had this situation where um, you were getting a, a please wait to try again. But also um, uh, Amazon customers who are using Amazon compute resources. Uh, one of those was actually uh, a Zoom uh, from there. So straight away, we can actually start to see, again, you can see the pattern that was coming on from there as well. Uh, take a look what was going on from there. We can see it wasn't globally impacting. Uh, the other thing you can actually see there as well, which is that the outage was, let's call it intermittent. So it was uh, starting to sort of flick up, flick down, which, which then caused, uh, had this pattern around there where we weren't actually necessarily impacting all the countries around the world. Uh, but also not all the users from there. So some people quite happily working. As I said, if they were putting down information that was sort of cached or, or um, didn't require some back-end interaction. But yeah. then also if they're in a prefix that wasn't actually impacted. Yeah, although um, from what we saw, there was a huge number of Amazon prefixes impacted as a result of this. So um, over 1,100 of Amazon's prefixes were impacted. Um, the other thing really interesting here too, as you mentioned, you know, for those folks who, who are not able to see what we're looking at, you know, the, the um, interval of time between each of these incidents was um, nearly identical. Um, and, and across most of them, it was identical. So, you know, this was an incident that, that occurred over a period of about 15 minutes. And then 65 minutes later, it would again happen for about 15 minutes. And then yet again, and this happened several times, um, and, and then, you know, another couple of times on top of that, oh, those, those were somewhat shorter incidents. So it was, it was sort of interesting that they had, as you said, this really um, consistent pattern that mm. um, occurred over nearly five hours, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was only 43 minutes in total disruption. Let's call it disruption that was going there when people couldn't use services or impacted new services. But yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big patterns guy. I just look for patterns and everything from there. And, and, and this was something that struck me when I started to look at it. Really uniform pattern. And, and what that you know, indicates to us or, or what that's indicative of is, is some sort of traffic engineering exercise that, that was going on. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's human beings. It's sort of, <laughs> we, we tend to be a little bit more erratic from there. But, but when something's sort of uh, either automated or going through this engineering, this process, running some playbook, 
perspective, you get these very defined uh, patterns as we, we, we're seeing there. So yeah, six, so, as you said, 15 minutes followed by 65 seconds. Yeah, potentially some automation. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's interesting. You know, we saw the packet loss. We could see kind of generally, in general, like which region, regions were impacted as a result of this. Um, but what was particularly interesting about this was when we dug a little deeper and sort of were able to see what the root cause of this was um, by looking yeah. at the BGP path visualization. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So again, so let, let, let's take a look from the customer perspective. Um, we're looking here from the Zoom pass coming on. And what we start to see there is this, this, this route change occurring from there. And when that route change occurs, um, what we actually start to see then, if I actually go into to, to one particular location here, I can actually then see, and I'm just wanting to see the path details if I can keep my cursor still for a minute there. What we, we actually see is uh, the, the change. So when we have this initial change coming uh, from there, we have the path going as it is intended to go through its, its, its various providers across there. So we've got um, uh, Talia, I think, coming from there and the, the path through there. But then it actually gets replaced through here. The, so this uh, AS9498 is Barty Airtel. So we can actually see it sort of injected into there. And we can see all these nice red lines coming across from here. Is an activity going on, the dotted lines where they have this path change. We can start to see a lot of the traffic or all the traffic from these areas suddenly start to come up through, um, uh, say, it's a Barty Airtel from that one there. Right. And then what, what was it? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so, so these are BGP monitors kind of picking up what the routes are across the service providers. And, and you know, from the standpoint of Zoom, they're, because they host uh, their um, applications, their services within Amazon, that's why we see Amazon here as kind of the origin from an from a, um, IP prefix standpoint. For, for yeah. you know the IP space that Zoom is is um, is hosted on. Yeah, exactly, and yeah, exa exactly as you say there. So you know, and, and this is again all indicative of the fact that they were leaking these prefixes out from there, or a number of the prefixes, or a vast number of the prefixes <laughs> out from there, where they <clears throat> excuse me, they started to, we started to get this um, this um, uh, uh, these, these path changes, route flapping occurring where where something was happening. But sort of straight away or immediately afterwards there, if we actually go to the next instance from there, what we then start to see is, again, we see Barty removed from that path uh, and we actually revert back to our normal path. So this is where we're getting that intermittent stuff coming up uh, from there again. So again, if I actually can go back into the same path there that we actually see, and again, looking for the BGP monitor to see what happened from path change, I can see I've reverted. I can see my Barty has actually been removed from that path and I've gone back to my original path. So this is where we started to get sort of that that um, that flapping coming coming in and out uh, from there, uh, or sorry that that uh, intermittent um, uh, perspective of the outage occurring from there, um, which 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 was kind of interesting. So that was going on from there. The, the other thing I think is is kind of interesting from this is that when we were actually going um, through this pattern and we started seeing it repeated, we could kind of pick up what was happening from uh, how it was manifesting itself from the the users. So again, if we're looking at that from uh, the, the Zoom perspective, again, I've seen my nice uniform pattern coming from here. I see my downtime. If I'm looking right in the middle of that sort of outage there, this is when we're recovering. If I'm looking right in the middle of the outage, I'm actually starting to see the impacts there. But if I look across to my, um, my, my, my the, the left-hand side there, I can just see essentially the, the, the process I go through to make this connection. So I do my name resolution. I can then start to do my connection uh, through my sort of my TCP connectivity. And then I go through my authentication for my SSL. I can start to see errors coming up across that, that area there. And, and why this was, I felt this was interesting was that when we start to actually look, obviously um, in some of these instances where we were starting to pass the traffic through and we we're going through Barty, we're actually seeing it uh, leak through the, the various uh, internet exchanges. But then this traffic was being passed up through to, uh, to Barty's network. Uh, and in some cases, so like looking from a New Zealand perspective, this was actually going up through, uh, from a path point of view, going up through India, when we actually started to see this mm -hmm. traffic from there. So all of a sudden, we've got a lot of traffic going through these areas, which is, is going to cause, um, it doesn't, well, it does cause issues with the path integrity, but it also starts to uh, impact um, the latency on that, that link. So if we main connectivity, we started to have these issues where we were timing out for connections or we were in the instance of um, the SSL going through, you know, a, a quite an elaborate handshake to go through the authentication process, doesn't 
really uh, and and for good reason doesn't uh, doesn't like loss rate and coming from there. So sort of a, a loss rate we actually see from that means the SSL fails. So therefore our overall connectivity fails. So yeah. so the reason I'm pointing this out is is that we might have path integrity, but the actual reason we go or the the, the, the impact of us going up via some diverse route can have a also can have an impact of degradation to the service we're looking at. Sorry, right. So, so, so in looking at like the HTTP server errors that we're seeing, connect SSL timeouts, I mean, it's pretty clear that this was, I mean, and obviously we saw from a BGP standpoint, there was significant um, kind of movement from a routing standpoint. So clearly this is all kind of paths were leading to like, this was a network issue. This was packet loss, yeah. but, but, you know, more, not necessarily more important, but just as important in understanding, okay, I'm, I understand that the routes have changed. I understand that there's, packet loss and that's impacting connectivity. Where is that traffic actually going? You know, if we look at path visualization, we can actually see the specific router hops um, and where traffic is, is terminating. We can see the specific amount of, of packet loss and which specific um, locations were, were impacted as a result of this change. Because, you know, obviously Amazon is very densely peered and there's there's a number of variables in terms of why not everybody would have um, taken up this path or even necessarily seen this path. So you know, Barty's in exchange points around the globe, and you know they're they're when they leaked these routes or started advertising um, to their own peers, some of them may have accepted it, accepted it, others may not have. You have yeah. other service providers across the internet who may not have. A, a peering relationship or or kind of even have an a, you know being a chain of, of peers with Barty and so would not have necessarily been impacted as a result of this so that's kind of why this um, this event would not have had necessarily a global impact but this is an example of, of one instance in which it did and we can see um, one of their um, nodes in the path here yeah Absolutely. So yeah, I'm just just uh, I'm showing here a path coming through from Auckland, New Zealand, going up through here, where the traffic was then sort of kind of routed through, going up into uh, in, in through Barty, through across uh, through an internet exchange, and then again into uh, into, into the Indian uh, perspective, but also the Indian network from there, which saw that manifest. And if we actually look at the response time we started to get from here, we can see we're actually going through there. It's kind of high from a latency uh, perspective. We're looking at sort of 488 milliseconds, uh, which is kind of indicative of what's going on from there. Right. So one of the reasons why there would have been packet loss as a result of this particular um, route change, because, you know, we, we do see leaks and, you know, sort of quote unquote route hijackings, you know, that that happen um, on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Because service providers, they're implementing changes. Sometimes they might have configuration issues that you know, where routes might be leaked um, in error and then they're quickly corrected. So oftentimes these things are short-lived. And in some cases we've seen where service providers have been inserted into the path, it's not necessarily noticeable because you know, there's no, there may not be any impact. There may not be any impact from the standpoint of packet loss or increased latency. And one of the reasons why this was particularly noticeable and there was packet loss was because Amazon obviously has a huge number of, um, you know, like there's a lot of traffic that's destined to Amazon every day. And if you just push all of that through a service provider that's not equipped to handle that, um, you know, all of that capacity, then you're gonna have packet loss. And that's what we see here. So this looks kind of like it was overloaded as a result of, of announcing so many paths to Amazon services. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great point. <clears throat> and again, the pattern there, you know, loss rate, loss rate, loss rate is, is kind of, is, is high or enough to impact the service there and then coming down um, as you start to go through uh, you yeah. know, that, that, that point of view. So, yeah. Well, exactly. the other thing that was kind of interesting with this pattern is that given you know, again, we're, we kind of, you know, are, you know, assuming that this couldn't, could be related to automation and, and they just, you know, we're, we're doing this repeatedly for whatever reason. <laughs> um, <laughs> it sort of suggests that this was corrected and, yeah. you know, and then again, re, re um, you know, I like happened again, 
due to Barty um, and not necessarily yep. something that was resolved directly by Amazon. Um, but at least, you know, purely from a pattern standpoint, that looks to be the case. I'd agree with there. And, you know, and, and again, so again, back to our pattern theories there and the, these are uniform, uniform. Um, we're going through that process. Then it's a much shorter one where, where some rectification or mitigation start trying to uh, take place. But again, yeah, absolutely. I, I would conclude it looks like it's, it's a change made by Barty trying to rectify what's going on from there. Yeah. So from the standpoint of, of users, um, complaining about this looks like probably would mostly have impacted, given the time frame, probably mostly would have impacted Europe. Um, but also like there was some chatter about users not being able to execute transactions in Amazon's on Amazon right. e-commerce site. Um, so there was some uh, commentary around that, but I think all in all, given the scope of this and, and actually how lengthy it was from, from in aggregate, it's actually, fairly surprising that this didn't have a broader impact. So, um, yeah. you know, so that's, that's some good, uh, good news there, but Absolutely. I think, you know, some of the, the takeaways from this are, you know, that there is sort of some inherent fragility of the internet just based on how it works. You know, the fact that, you know, in many ways it's built on an honor system. And even in this instance, even if, you know, like RP, RPKI would not have made a difference because the origin never changed. So even if like service providers, you know, even if Amazon had its um, origin, you know, like their routes were signed and service providers, you know, had implemented RPKI, this that wouldn't have mattered because Barty wasn't saying they were at the origin. They were saying, you know, they were simply inserting themselves into the path. Um, yep. So it, it sort of speaks to the need to be able to know, you know, if you're an enterprise, like where your traffic is on the internet because even if there's no packet loss, you could have these sort of invisible hijackings or these invisible leaks that nobody notices because there's no performance impact, but your traffic is maybe getting routed out of region when it shouldn't or is being sent through service providers that you don't necessarily want um, handling your traffic. So it's really important to not only understand your um, user's experience and your own experience from a performance standpoint, but also from the standpoint of governance and understanding where your data is <laughs> um, on yeah. the internet. Exactly. Yeah, there's, there's a whole area of sort of sovereignty and residency and it is where, covering where my data is, but how is it getting to there? How is it passing yeah. through there? Uh, and it's very important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, um, you know, pretty interesting event. Um, you know, we'll we'll bring these um, incidents to you as we um, as we observe them, and, and until next time, thanks for joining us, Mike. Um, we'll see you next time.